Hi everyone, the Island Stack here. Welcome to another video. Firstly, just wanted to say thank you for the engagement on the last video. Slowly creeping up towards that thousand subscriber mark. Um, for those that are new, uh, welcome. And also just to let you know, once I do get to a thousand subscribers, I'll be giving away this half ounce silver rabbit. Um, the details of how to enter the competition are in a video on my channel, but I will also link in the description down below so go check that out if you want to enter that so today's video i want to have a look at some sovereigns so i know the 2025 sovereign is due to be released on november the 4th so i found this article while i was on the royal mint's website a few days ago around significant sovereigns that the royal mint think have been uh, issued um in the history of the sovereign itself. So I'm just gonna go through some of their coins that they think are noteworthy and then just give you my thoughts why. Okay, some of them, I agree, they all have some sort of significance, but I think there is also other coins that potentially they've overlooked. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any of the coins uh, that they have on their list in my collection. so. Uh, apologies for that so you just have to look at these instead so firstly a little bit of a history about the sovereign itself so the sovereign's been around for over 500 years um, the royal mint's uh, most significant coin you could argue uh, in its history um, it's had obviously got the most heritage the sovereign was introduced in 1489 by Henry the seventh ordered the Royal Mint to produce a new money of gold. So they came up with the sovereign. So the first sovereign uh, was 15.55 grams approximately, which was worth around 20 shillings and is a lot bigger than the coins that we know now as the modern sovereign. The sovereign fell out of favour during the reign of James I. Um, and then the sovereign was reintroduced under George III in 1817, which is what this design for 2017 was based upon. Um, then, obviously, with that introduction of the sovereign back in 1817, we got the what is now iconic uh, Benedetto Prestrucci's George and the Dragon design, as you can see on most sovereigns used from that point in time up until today. So there is seven sovereigns that the Royal Mint has on this article. So I'll go through them one by one and give you a little bit of history about each of them. So the first one that they have on their list is the 1937 sovereign. So the sovereign from Edward VIII. Obviously, this one's got its own quite substantial history because it was the sovereign that was never meant to be meant to be released. There was only five thousand and one of them minted. Um, it was the last sovereign issued until the sovereigns started in nineteen fifty two with Queen Elizabeth on. Um, of its rare, its rare rarity, I think, stems from the history of the scandal love story that goes alongside why he didn't reign uh, when he was due to um so there's that one so some of the coins that are on this list are one of the reasons that i think they're they are significant but they're not really obtainable for some people so the 1937 is still fairly expensive but not as expensive as some of the coins that they have on this list the next one that they have noted down is the 1819 George III Sovereign. So this one was relatively low mintage as well. So 3,574 coins were minted. Uh, so they were these were only made up of gold given by private merchants. So only at, only the wealthiest people could afford, the, afford these coins at the time when these were made. It's only thought that there is um, a handful of these that remain. 
the Royal Mint sold one in 2019 for around £100,000. So just to give you some idea of value, it's not going to be a coin that you're going to be finding. Um, or if you do find one, buy, take very good care of it and get it, get it graded, I'd suggest, because um, it's probably worth a fair amount of money. The next one they have noted is the 1993 Queen Elizabeth the Sovereign. So the closest I've got is this 1999. Um, but the 1993, again, a relatively low mintage of 4,349, which is the lowest mintage for a sovereign during the 1990s. It was the Royal Jubilee coin uh, of, or that year was the Royal Jubilee, so 40th anniversary of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. It was only struck in proof format, and most of those all went to collectors. So that's another one that's obviously very, relatively low mintages in the grand scheme of things, um, which I presume is still relatively attainable if you can find one. But I might, like I say, these coins are not going to be cheap. The next one on the Royal Mint's list is the 1879 Victoria Younghead. So there was just over 20,000 of these uh, minted, which is considerably low compared to other years around this time, which had millions minted. The lowest that I could find uh, around that time period were the ones issued by the Melbourne and Sydney Mints which were approximately 1.3 million coins uh, for each of those mints. So just to give you a comparison, so 20,000 is relatively low for that time period. This coin um, was the year around the Anglo-Zulu uh, war in South Africa. Um, so that is supposedly a significant um point in time according to the Royal Mint. I will admit I do not know that much around the Anglo-Zulu War so I don't know the significance um, but if anybody else does know please let me know in the comments down below. And this was the portrait of Queen Victoria that was used on sovereigns for the next 47 years, so the young head. Uh, the next coin that they have down is the 1989 which I'm sure most of you all know and recognize again around just over twenty three thousand were minted of this one to mark the 500 years anniversary of the sovereign so this one features queen elizabeth sat on the coronation chair rather than a normal portrait it was the first time in over a hundred years that the design had changed and georgian the dragon from benedetto prostrucci was replaced with a crown shield of the royal arms set on a double Tudor rose. So again, they, these are, they're, they're, they're relatively, you do see them on some of the auction sites fairly regularly, but again, don't go for, they do go for quite a premium. Um, this is also the first and only time that the word sovereign was written on a British coin. So, there's an, the inscription around the outside edge of the 1989. Um, sovereign uses the word sovereign, as I said, so it's the first and only time that that has been used. The next coin that they had on the list was the original sovereign, so 1489. Uh, so, as I said, there is very unlikely that you're ever going to see one of these coins it's thought that there's only two of these sovereigns that remain outside of museum collections. There, I had a look around. There is one on the Sovereign Rarities website, which is a 1490 or 1492, I think. So not the original first year. Um, that's graded at AU50, and that is currently up for sale for £875,000. So... The likelihood of any any of us ever seeing that coin is very, very low. Um, this was obviously when the end of the House of York um, and the start of Henry Tudor becoming the first monarch of the Tudor uh, dynasty 
which reigned for the next 118 years. So I'm sure everyone would love to have one of those in their collection, but obviously not going to be attainable for any of us mere mortals. And the last one that was on their list was the 2004 uh, Queen Elizabeth Sovereign. So this one had a, light, a slightly lower mintage to other years around that time with 10,000 proof sovereigns and only 30,000 of the bullion sovereigns being uh, made. And that was the first year to use the fourth portrait of Queen Elizabeth. So that's the list of the ones that the Royal Mint has down. Let me know your thoughts down below if you agree or disagree with their significant um, sovereign list. To me, I can see why they have the coins on the list but I think there is also other potential coins that have been overlooked so for example like I don't think the 20, 2004 sorry is necessarily as significant um, okay it was the first time that they used the portrait the fourth portrait of Queen Elizabeth um, so that's fine but I just had a quick look over some of the other uh mintages for some of the other sovereigns throughout the years uh for reference i was using my oh, sorry coin book from 2022 um one of the things that i found quite interesting was <laughs> this notice at the bottom when i was looking through uh noting that the prices were quoted as of august 2021 at gold at 1300 pounds an ounce and silver at 17 pound 30 how we'd all wish for 1300 pounds an ounce again so we you could buy some more gold um, based at current prices that are over 2,100. Um, but yeah, so just a quick few that I'm going to reel off that I thought potentially could make the list. So let me know if you agree with these as well. So there's the 1841 Sovereign. That's just a normal Sovereign, but relatively low mintages. So just 124,000 for that one. The 1902, so there was a map proof issued, which was 15,000 mintages, mintages, minted, mintage, sorry. Um, then the 1909 and 1910 Canadian minted sovereigns. So there's 16,000 and 28,000 respectively for each of those. I know that those generally go for um, better money on the auction websites that I've seen. So I think something like that is potential. And then there's the modern versions of the special design sovereign. So there's the 2002 sovereign, the 2005, the 2012, uh, the 2016, 2017, 2022. So relatively low mintages compared to some of the ones in the past. Um, but some of the special year designs I'm not a fan of so for example the 2005 i think looks a bit cartoonish for the george and the dragon design 2016 i know was um a sleeper coin to some i guess it didn't really it wasn't really that popular when it came out but it has grown in popularity with the um butler portrait of the queen on that where it's slightly offset to one side of the coin but that one does have a slightly higher mintage in, than, say, the 2012, which would, had 5,000. The 2016 was nearly 8,000 mintage. The 2017, which I'm surprised didn't make the list as well. So they marked the 500 year with the 1989, and that made the list. But they didn't mark the two, 200th anniversary with the 2017 um, of the modern sovereign. So I think that that one could potentially have been on the list but again these generally go for a little bit higher premiums um, and then there is the obviously these more modern ones so the jubilee sovereign so this is the i think the only time that we've ever had a platinum jubilee so i find compared to having the ruby jubilee as one of the coins on the list i don't know why the platinum jubilee wasn't on the list Again, I know these these are still relatively, I, I used the word cheap, but can be still found relatively inexpensively on some of the internet sites. These were 
slightly higher mintage is around 13,000. So I think this, this is potential going forward to become a slightly more significant coin, hopefully, uh, more so than say this, the Memorial one hasn't been received as well. I know there's a lot of people that um and are around the actual design because it's quite busy. Um, and then you've got this one, for example, but I don't think, I don't see this as a special year, but it's obviously the first one with King Charles on using the crown portrait, but I don't think that would be marked as anything significant. There's also a lot of strike on the day sovereigns that have a lot lower mintages. So if I just bring the, the book back in quickly, just so you can see some of the numbers. So you can see these are in the low hundreds for some of them. But for me, the strike on the day ones are just an additional massive premium on what is already a normal year sovereign, for example. So some of them have slight privy marks, etc. cetera. Um, but for the extra premium, I don't really see the strike on the days as, I, I don't have any and I don't really see the appeal myself, but just something else to show you that the mintages for those are significantly lower. So yeah, that's just a quick run through um, the sovereign list on the article that I found from the Royal Mint. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below if there's anything or any sovereigns that you think should be on their list that aren't and vice versa. Uh, but thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you all on the next one. Cheers.